And just wrapping up our conversation about Mackinac Island, I'm going to be interested to see the role that the governor plays um, because he's kept a very low profile since Flint. It's it's a very different year for him, Nolan, than it has been in years past with the Mackinac Policy Conference. It is, and it'll be interesting to see. He always has been very comfortable interacting um, socially <clears throat> on the porch and in, and, and, and in the parlor. You know, you, you always had access to him throughout these days. Um, it's be wondered, it'll be interesting to see if he's a little gun shy now. <coughs> he has been, uh, you know, taking a lot of heat in, in public and a lot of, there's been a lot of, you know, sort of abuse directed at him in public. This is a friendlier crowd, but you never know, you know, who's going to slip on or in and how ugly that might get. Well, it's sort of a friendlier crowd. I mean, he's still got the legislature up there and they're not, yeah, they ain't be, that friendly they're right They're not going to be shouting, uh, they're not going to be shouting. Uh, I don't think anybody up on him. Mac and I'll be shouting at no, him. But that's what he's gone through. But know? this used to be, I mean, the first few years uh, that he was governor, it was like this was his conference. Was right. uh, yeah. yeah, right. And and he would uh, roll out big ideas or or put the final final touches on on big ideas, big projects, and things like that. This will be different, I think, because of the change in tenor around this administration that Flint has uh, has affected. Yeah. So, Sandy mentioned so. you know the whole infrastructure discussion. Yeah. You you ask him about it. Well, you know he just got the, a Flint funding deal passed that didn't include that 160 million yeah. to begin the process of addressing Michigan's um, infrastructure. So he's he's been disappointed so far this year on his yeah. agenda. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Make sure you join us up on Mackinac Island next week. We're going to be streaming all of the sessions live. Plus, you can see my week three times next week. <laughs> We're going to bring you shows from Mackinac Every next day. Wednesday, Thursday, <laughs> Friday night at 7.30 p.m. Very exciting. All right. You know, hey, rumblings that other states are trying to entice Dow Chemical to move workers and operations from Midland is leading to a bigger conversation across the state about how we keep businesses here and how we attract businesses. Are we investing enough? Are we doing it in the right way? I mean, do we have enough funding in place, Nolan, for those, like the MEDC, to be able to bring in those businesses? Well, you know, that, and that's always a good question. I don't think you can buy <clears throat> business. I don't think you can buy jobs. You've got to make the climate here right for all businesses. And one of the things, I'm, I'm moderating a panel Thursday on the defense industry, and you've got a lot of other states looking at Michigan's defense in industry, particularly TACOM, which is based in Warm, and saying, hey, we would like that here. And, you know, they've got their congressional <clears throat> district organized to compete for those defense dollars. We've lost a lot of clout in Congress, and there is some worry, you know, that we've got to step up to protect that defense industry and you know it's across the board other industries as well and if you take a look if, if Midland lost a part of, of Dow that would have an, a, a huge impact yeah. well and and it's not just Midland go around the state uh, the, the the last decade and a half uh, we've seen cities absolutely, or towns, absolutely devastated when the the one big company mm -hmm. that has existed there for really long periods of so time goes away. So where's the push to be able to hang on to, to companies? Is it well, more incentives? And so no one likes so, the word incentives. so my, my view of it is, is, again, climate. I think it has to do not just with taxes and regulation, though, but with, uh, with investment. I mean, businesses like states that invest in education. Uh, they like states that invest in infrastructure and roads and, and things like that. Uh, all of the things that we're doing really poorly at right now, as a matter of fact, uh, higher ed, things mm -hmm. like that, where we're lagging behind other states, those are the things that, that put us at a competitive disadvantage when companies either look at where they want to go or are here and maybe look at uh, states that are doing better. And you've got to help a place like Mid <clears throat> Midland be competitive for young talent. Yeah, because absolutely. we're we're not producing enough young talent here for that and industry or other it. industries. And you've got to make sure that that young talent will look at Midland and say, yeah, I could live here. Now, always in the past, you know, young professionals have come there and raised families and it's, you know, been a thriving community. Now kids want urban centers and what have you. And you, you've got to help Flint sort of, sort of appeal to that young, young talent in much the way Grand Rapids has managed to do. Yeah.